question four is also is coming from question four is coming from work power and energy and also motion on an inclined plane we can see that a lorry of mass eighteen thousand kilograms is traveling on uh, along a straight road but a, on a horizontal section of the road the power of the lorry's engine is constant there is a constant resistance to motion 1600 newtons then roman one the steady speed which the lorry can maintain with the engine working at the power p watts is 30 meters per second find the value of p now here we should know uh, that for steady speed acceleration is equal to what zero okay for steady speed here acceleration has to be equal to zero now remember in mechanics you have to have the art of uh, sketching because it helps you recognize the forces that are acting on that one particle so suppose this is my lorry of course there is a driving force because the engine has gotten the power and then there is a resistance force here 1600 newtons now we know that power is the rate of doing work so if it is force times distance that is the work then divide by the time now distance over time is always the speed so that means power can be given as uh, force times what the speed okay so having seen that this simply implies that uh, power is going to be equal to of course the driving force then times the speed okay sorry times the speed now using f is equal to ma of course because there is motion here we shall have the driving force which is taking the car this side then subtract the resistance force one six zero zero then this one is equal to m m uh, the mass is eighteen thousand then times of course acceleration is zero so that means when this one goes this side we shall have the driving force which is equal to 1600 in other words for a steady speed the driving force will always be equal to the resistance force now we shall have our power here which will be 1600 then times the speed which is 30 okay now 16 times 3 that is 48 then we shall put the three zeros there that will be 48000 watts and that is that okay then roman 2 they are saying that at an instant when the speed of the lorry is 16 meters per second its engine is working at a power of 40 kilowatts find the acceleration of the lorry at this instant now of course uh, we need we need to find the new driving force okay so since we know that power is equal to the driving force times the velocity so uh, the new driving force is going to be equal to power which is now 40 kilowatts and here we are using watts so it will be 40,000 then divide by the speed which speed is this one here 16 okay that is that then using f which is equal to ma now again driving force so we have the driving force then minus the resistance force then this one is equal to ma so 18000 then times a so there is acceleration which we need to find right now that means our acceleration here is going to be equal to driving force which is 40000 out of 16 right then minus 1600 then from there we shall divide all through by this 18000 to get the value of a so 18,000 and what will be our A here? So we have 40,000, then you divide by 16 and then minus 1600, then down here we divide by 18,000. So this one is giving us one over 20, which is 0 0.05. So 0 0.05 meters per second squared, as simple. As that then next part B when the lorry has reached a speed of 20 meters per second it begins to ascend a section of the road inclined at an angle of alpha to the horizontal 
motion on an inclined plane. The engine now works at a power of 120 kilowatts. There is no change in the lorry speed as it ascends the hill. That means the speed it was moving with. Now, the section is here, so it was moving with 20 here. That is the same speed that we are going to base on. That is the speed here, and then maybe another speed just up there. Okay? Uh, that is if it is not steady speed. Then they are saying that the constant resistance to motion remains 1,600 newtons. Again, I'm going to draw something here. So this lorry here is ascending this hill. And as it is ascending the hill, we should know that there is a driving force here. Then there is this 1,600 newtons. But there is also uh, a component, the horizontal component of its weight, which is mg sine. So it has to be 1,800, the mg. Actually, it is 18,000, then g, then sine alpha. Because, of course, here we have the alpha. Okay? So those are the forces there, that motion. So remember, V is given as 20, the speed. So that means the driving force, which is going to be equal to power over that speed. Power is 120, then 1,000. Then we divide by 20. Of course, this one will go. 2 will go here 6 times. So we shall have 6,000, right? So this one will be 6 thousand newtons now remember they said that uh, let's see if the speed is steady so they said that the engine now works at this there is no change in the lorry speed as it ascends the hill so it continues if it was moving with 20 here so it continues with that 20. So that means we are having what we call steady speed. Okay. So for steady speed, like I said before, for steady speed, acceleration is equal to what? Zero. Now using F is equal to MA. So we shall have the driving force, which is 6,000. Then minus these two forces that are opposing the motion, we have 1,600. Zero, zero. Then we also have 18000 times G, which is 10, then sine of alpha. Then this one will be equal to what? Zero. So when I take this one, this side, it becomes a positive. Why is it equal to zero? Remember, acceleration is zero. So when it multiplies with the M, we get a zero, right? Okay. Now, 6000 minus 1600, that one will give us, uh, what will it give us? It will give us 4400. So that means alpha is going to be equal to the arc sine of, first get this one, which is 4,400. Then we shall divide by this 180,000. Okay. Then after we take the arc sine, so what will be our alpha here? Remember the calculator has to be in radians, I mean in degrees here. So shift, then sine. Now we have 4,400. Zero, zero. Then we divide by 180000. And this one will give us 1.402. Or I can just take it as 1.4 to one decimal place. 1.4 degrees, one decimal place. Remember, answers in degrees are given to one decimal place. In radians, we give to three significant figures.